I just keep saying to myself, I've become, I've become, I've become. As I have these opportunities to reconvene with people from my past, you know, recently I had a spur of the moment to send a text to my first employer, shouts out to Pasquale, you feel me, very rare. And he hasn't seen me in so long as I realize I'm about to meet with him potentially just to see what he's going to see after seeing me stage one. Just a young soul looking for the hustle. So, you know, for all you broke-ass, dumb-ass motherfuckers, I don't got no respect for you. Why? Because, man, I always wanted to get money. When I used to be in 113, which is my middle school, RELC, Ronald Edmonds Learning Center, 113, Brooklyn. Me and my bro, Peasy, because y'all seeing me, we dropping music now. So we used to even put music on MySpace. So the music shit ain't new. We been rapping. Like Ryman, Iman, Emac, all that. But when I was in 113, I, we used to go downtown Brooklyn. You know, right around by Nevins. There used to be a Popeyes over there. Then it turned into a Five Guys. Then it turned into a Sleepies or some shit. Now it's one of these like condo buildings or some shit like that. Right off of the Ave you know, around the corner from the McDonald's, like I said, by Nevins. There used to be this dude selling bootleg CDs. He had the carpet out, or the blanket out. And he used to have all the latest CDs and bootleg, you know what I'm saying? Whatever would drop. It could be Get Rich or Die Trying. It could be, you know what I'm saying? What the game's been missing, Joel Santana. These are shit I was listening to. I had the real CDs, but you know, they still had the bootlegs. So whether you had the real CDs or not, this is the point. I would either get the bootleg if I didn't feel like paying for the real CD or I'd go downtown to the record store and get the real CD, you know, come with the booklet, come with the case. You wanted that vibe, you feel me? You, the disc had the art on it, you know, swag. And I would use Nero. <clears throat> Nero was a program and I remember I bought like a CD DVD burner and installed it in my desk. I had a Dell, like a Dell Tower desktop. Motherfucker been figuring shit out since he was a kid, big intelligence. Installed the, the burner, the CD burner, bought that shit from Circuit City. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Circuit City. Atlantic, where Best Buy is right now. It used to be Circuit City. Facts. So I went into Circuit City, boom, 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 bought the DVD burner, went downtown, got the CDs. You know, Biggie Duets I had on deck. Cameron, Purple Haze I had on deck. What else I had on deck? Get Rich Die Trying, yeah, what the game's been missing. Had that on deck. Had a bunch of shit on deck, a bunch of CDs on deck. But I used to burn copies. Went to Guitar Center, even bought some like vinyl looking discs. So, you know, I had that touch to it. And I used to sell bootleg CDs out the backpack. Yeah, this is seventh grade, bro. This is 2000, I'm 13 years old, bro. Selling bootleg CDs out the backpack. I got them for five, you feel me? Whatever you are, your world is yours. So at the end of the day, we looking at it like, all right, we took about my first employer. My first employer, Pasquale, this is at 18. I always was about getting this bread. So I don't respect none of you broke ass niggas, bro. Cause I've been trying to get money. My pops would be like, oh no, you can't work, you can't work. You gotta, you gotta focus on school. Shut the fuck up, I'm trying to get bread, bro. So then, let me even tell you how I got my first job. So I'm supposed to work with my uncle, he got a couple of stores and a couple of restaurants and I'm trying to do delivery. I'm trying to do delivery because me, I'm trying to meet more people. This is just what I, this is my intuition. It wasn't conscious strategy, nothing. I'm just like, yo, I'm trying to knock on doors, all these like new people in my neighborhood, gentrification, I, I, I'm trying to meet people. You know what I'm saying? The cool little hipster chicks, all that shit. I'm trying to knock on doors, boom, boom. Pops is on some fucking bullshit. He goes to my uncle, tells him not to give me the job. Don't give me the job because it's apparently not prestigious or some shit. Nigga, I'm trying to hustle, bro. I'm trying to hustle, bro. I'm trying to get bread. Fuck all this other shit. You stopping my money, right? So boom, I get to, I think I'm about to have this job done on Friday. I go to the spot. He like, nah, your pop said don't do it. I'm like, that's bullshit. So I'm walking home. I'm pissed off. So I'm walking up. I'm walking up decal, right? Because I walk down South Portland, they make a right on decal. I'm walking up decal, walking back towards 113. Now I'm 18 years old. This is like my first year of college, freshman year of college. 
and uh, I make a left by Mediba, where Mediba used to be. This is crazy. The neighborhood then changed crazy. Now it's called uh, some other shit. I ain't even gonna drop the name because y'all niggas ain't really like that. You feel me? But Mediba used to be there. If you know, you know. Made a left on Mediba, and I saw this hole in the wall, no sign, just big ass windows, cafe looking vibe. Walked in the door. I'm still standing in the door, and the shorty's behind the counter. I'm like, Y'all got a manager, is the manager here? So I'm still standing in the door, door open. I'm in the door. She's like, he's right behind you. So I turn around, it's a little white guy, you feel me? I'm like probably like 6'4 at the time, he's probably like 5'9. He's a white dude. I'm like, I'm like, yo, can I talk to you outside for a second? As I looked at that in retrospect, I know that sounded crazy. Like, can I talk to you outside for a second? Like, what the fuck? But you know what I'm saying? He probably looked at me, sized me up, was like, man, this motherfucker is probably like 140 pounds, this motherfucker. I'll fuck this nigga up. Real life. So he's like, all right. So he step outside for a second. I'm like, yo, man, I'm a young college kid. I'm looking for a job. You got a, uh, you got a spot for me? I'm like, I don't got no skills. Like, everybody, you know what I'm saying? You go to this place, that place, they're trying to look for experience. How the fuck are you supposed to get experience? I have experience if you never had a job. It's a funny catch a little 22. Real ones know, though. So I get the spot. He like, all right, come here on Thursday. And your bus tables and wash dishes. I'm like, what's that bus table? He's like, you collect the plates and the shit like that, and you wash dishes. I'm like, say less. Boom. Show up on Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Four hours, like a little mini work day. I guess a little training. See if I got a mind on my shoulders. You got to run again. You know what I'm saying? You got to see if motherfucker is really there. You feel me? I pull up. Angel was there. Shouts out to Angel. She, you know what I'm saying? Doing her thing. And boom. Wash dishes, bus tables. Simple as fuck. Probably got like $70 cash that day. You know, tips included. I was like, what? Nigga got paid, bro. I felt lit. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I don't respect none of you broke ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, I want to talk about this. It's like since then, I've been on this like experiential journey and becoming who y'all see today. You know, I ended up meeting a lot of people there. Meeting a lot of people out of there. It was a very cataclysmic spot. If you know, you know. Smooch. Carlton Ave, Fort Green, phenomenal place. You know, uh, an academy for the eccentric, let's say. Meeting people from South Africa, meeting people from fucking, he's an Australian, meeting English people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all over the fucking place, you know what I'm saying? Picked up a lot of bad habits, you know what I'm saying? Because I was just a kid looking for the experience and just trying to be all cool and shit. Started smoking cigarettes, you know, started smoking weed. I was smoking more weed. I was already smoking weed from high school. Started selling weed, being a little cheeky motherfucker, you feel me? That's where the cheeky, cheeky ad libs comes from. But, you know, I'm just reflecting on, you know, I've become, right? And that means a lot because I could have severely failed and crashed out in life. That's not a promise that when you start to go wayward, when you go down the trippy path, when you start to experiment and experience with, you know what I'm saying, certain avenues of life. And it's definitely less likely that you're going to make it in life than you are going to make it in life. So, but I've always had this seed. I've always had this natural disposition, philosophically, ontologically, man, like I've always had this disposition. And to see the man that I've become now utilizing my gift in the best way possible, not leading people with smoking weed, doing drugs, partying, you know, that's the first phase. The first phase of your true journey is trying to get the most for yourself. And that first level of self-actualization, that first lotus bloom, because the lotus flower blooms twice, it blooms multiple times. So the first time it blooms and you reach that peak, you know, it's usually you running it up on some selfish shit, you know, and going against the laws, right? Because you're, you're, you, what happens is you want to express your individuality, right? That's what, that's what the basis of quote unquote woke is. I'm just understanding this as we're speaking right now. It's unfolding for me as it's unfolding for you. But you can understand the basis of being woke as just expressing one's individuality, deviating from the norm and deviating from conformity. The first wave of that is usually going to be by breaking a lot of laws. 
but in breaking a lot of laws, you're gonna break yourself. Break yourself, fool. Go break yourself. And most people, once they break themselves, have broken themselves, don't realize that they have broken themselves. They've done it to themselves. So they don't go through that recognition phase where they realize it's time to turn around and get this shit correct. You don't have to sacrifice your individuality, but you don't also have to disrespect objective reality, right? So then karma and awakening and reflection come into play and you truly start to reflect on what you need to become. Whatever you why your world is yours. I'll never tell y'all that it's cool to do drugs. I'll never tell y'all to go out there and seek and try to find yourself in drugs. It's similar like somebody went to prison. Like, you know, people who go to prison or people who have experiences, really deep, dangerous experiences, like psychologically dangerous experiences is fucking dealing with psychedelics and shit. Like motherfuckers don't come back from that shit. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And you're dealing with your organic chemistry. If you blow a fuse or activate a gene for some wrong inscription, it's over for your fucking shit. So don't even fuck around. That's a life sentence. A life sentence is you fucking skitting out because you did some fucking chemical. Don't do it. You know, don't run that risk. Everybody don't make it. Just like everybody who goes to jail doesn't come out. They don't fucking make it. They don't come out the same. They don't come out. Some people don't come out. Some people don't even come out the same. Motherfuckers is forever scarred and marred. You feel me? <sighs> but to think about the fact that I'm now sober, fit, enlightened, actually getting rich, helping so many people with that one gift that I've been nurturing. I've been YWY since 2013, 2012. The money that I was getting out of there bought me all of my studio equipment. The money that I was getting out of there bought me a bunch of, I always invested in myself. Got enough money for the machine, started producing the beats. Got enough money for the microphone, we started recording. Got enough money for the laptop, got enough money. I invested in everything. I've been invested in myself since day one. So, you know, this is just a good solid reflection video to feel, it feels good to have become, to really achieve that peace with yourself as a man, you know? And I, I urge all of you to just wake up and get sensitive to life enough to recognize that the more you transgress, the more you regress. We'll keep that for another video, but it ties into the video that I made two days ago or two videos ago about God, the devil, and your free will. You know, at certain points, you have to realize your transgressions are leading to your regressions. And if you truly want to make progress in this universe, then you need to assess the, how you gress, right? How you gress aggression, progression, regression, transgression. Tell me, I don't know why your world is yours. What have you become so far? Have you really broken yourself? If you're not sober, you broke. If you're not fit, you're broke. If you're not enlightened, you're broke. If you're not getting money, you're broke. And it's because you're a broken soul. So it's time to correct and fix yourself. I don't know why your world is yours. I've become five time author. And it gets annoying saying that because I already know what I am actually to be continued, to be disclosed. You know, five-time author, never missed motherfucker, fucking jack, beautiful, sober, high integrity, you know, really leading the vanguard of human evolution, you know. Positive example of possibility, a symbol of pure possibility, you know. So... Get your ass on the program and stop fucking your life over. Consider the vibrations raised. And we're not done becoming. We're not like, oh, we've become and then no. This is just the beginning. But to see how low I've been smoking cigarettes and taking coffee breaks and smoking cigarettes and being confused and dealing with these people, this period and tripping and showing, I can see, I can see myself. I can see myself from 
watching the movie as it happened because I was in the state of consciousness. I was the person seeing the first person, but I'm also the person I am now and I can remote view myself and see how fucking patient people were with me. Shouts out to Pasquale, man. Whatever you are, your world is yours. Consider the vibrations raised. It's about to be a new movie. It's always a new movie. But no matter where we are, no matter what we have, there's only one fucking purpose, one fucking mission. And that mission is to be what you respect, who you respect, how you respect, and nothing less. At the highest level of honesty. If you don't respect the fact that you're out of shape, you can't respect that you're out of shape you can't respect being out of shape you can't respect being broke you can't respect being on drugs and you can't respect not knowing shit in life nobody it's just impossible i respect being a, no shut the fuck up shut the fuck hole up bro so it's time to earn your self-respect back and become what you're intended to be at the highest level of perfection and then ever be perfecting that perfecting never perfect consider the vibrations raised